This is a 75 year old male patient's right eye which had morgagni and cataract and with the rule of stigmatism of 2.5 diopters. A superior sclerocorneal tunnel was planned, conjunctival peritomy was done. I prefer to do a larger peritomy so that it is comfortable while making the sclerocorneal tunnel. Once the peritomy is done, since it was a subtenance block, there was subconjunctival fluid superiorly which can cause obstruction during the surgery. So using the same peritomy scissors from posteriorly to the limbus, it is squeezed gently and the conjunctiva is drained of the fluid. Using a bevel of crescent blade, a frown incision is made to so size of around 8 to 9 millimeters. The main reason behind doing a large incision, one, we do not know how large the nucleus is. Once the incision is made, the crescent is placed on the left end of the tunnel and it is swiped unidirectionally towards the right a couple of times to create a plane. You can see the crescent is already in the sclera. Once it reaches the limbus with heel down and wriggling movement, the corneal plane is entered and it is swiped onto either side to create a uniform tunnel across. The 1.6 mm super blade paracentesis is made at the 9 o'clock position. The movement of the blade is parallel to the iris so as to have more stromal coverage. A small air bubble is injected following which Trifan Blue is injected into the eye. Again, a second air bubble is injected so as to paint the blue over the ILC properly. HPMC is gently injected into the anterior chamber using a bevel down keratome, placing it sideways at the external lip and turning as you go inside. A dimple is created and with forward movements, the left side of the tunnel is entered and the same is done at the right side. And using the same keratome, the anterior lens capsule is pierced so that you have a larger opening in a single go so as to prevent Argentina flags. You have a lot of cortical fluid draining out. Using balance salt solution, it is gently flushed out of the bag without overfilling the bag. A mobile nucleus is always an indication that the posterior capsule is intact. Once the cortical fluid is drained, HPMC is injected into the anterior chamber completely. Ideally, you should be using a rexus forceps to complete the rexus. In this video, I am going to show you how to use a cystitome in such cases when there is no availability of rexus forceps. Initiate a flap wherever the tear is. Here, inf inferior flap is initiated. As there is no underlying nucleus, it is difficult to do the rexus. So in that case, push the nucleus towards the area where you are doing the rexus. So when I am doing superiorly, the nucleus is dragged to the superior side. So when I am going temporally, it is dragged to the superior temporal side. While do, by doing this, it will mimic a regular rexus because you need some hard surface underneath the capsule for you to have a proper rexus. So once the rexus is done, the next step is nucleus delivery. You should understand in these cases, hydroprolapse does not work nor hooking out. When you try to hook out, you are going to have slippage. It's going to be like a marble. It's going to keep running in the back. So the best way to remove a nucleus in Morgagnin cataracts is to shallow the anterior chamber. When you shallow the anterior chamber, the bag also shallows. Once the bag shallows, the nucleus pops into the anterior chamber. Then you can inject viscoelastic and use a vectus or like in this case, I had a larger tunnel. So I did a visco expression by keeping the visco cannula at one end of the tunnel and depressing the lower lip. So viscoelastic is again injected into the anterior chamber and IOL placement is being planned. A three-piece intraocular lens is chosen for this patient. No particular reason, you can also place a single piece intraocular lens. The optic is held at one third of the position, tilted downwards so that the leading haptic goes into the back. Viscoelastic is again filled into the anterior chamber and the trailing optic haptic junction using the Sinsky soak is brought into the anterior chamber over the iris. And gently the dialing hole is obliquely pushed and dialed so that the haptics also go into the back. Now you can see the IOL is well centered in the back. So now coming to the next step of visco removal. So I do not prefer to aspirate viscoelastic as it takes a lot of time. What I do is I fill the 5cc syringe with BSS connected to the Simcoe's cannula. Go in with full flow of the Simcoe's cannula. First, I depress the tunnel and irrigate all across so as to remove the viscoelastic and then I start flushing the 5 cc of BSS into the anterior chain. By doing so, the viscoelastic sticking on to the endothelium and everywhere in the anterior chamber and back gets flushed out of the eye. And then using a hydrocannula, BSS is used to hydrate the parasynthesis. The 
superior rectus is released and the conjunctiva approximated on both sides and then the cautery is done on the temporal side. Intracameral moxifloxacin is being given. To summarize, while operating on margagnin cataracts, always make a large sclerocarneal tunnel so as to facilitate the nucleus removal. Proper capsular staining is very important before initiating rexis. Rexis forceps is the most preferred instrument in such cases. It's safer to puncture the anterior lens capsule with your keratome. The intralenticular pressure is neutralized slowly when you have a larger opening, but when you have a small neck with a cystitome, chances of Argentina flag sign is high. Drain the intralenticular fluid completely and then fill the bag and anterior chamber with viscoelastic before initiating rexis. Move the nucleus to the site where you are doing rexis so that you have an underlying hard surface. Hydro prolapse and hooking out the nucleus will not work in such cases because the nucleus is very dense like a marble. So the best way to do is, is collapse the anterior chamber which leads to the shallowing of the bag and thus brings the nucleus into the anterior chamber. Fill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. Visco delivery or vectus delivery of the nucleus can be done. Single piece PMMA lens or a three piece PMMA lens can be placed in the bag. Do not aspirate viscoelastic closer to the endothelium. Instead, flush BSS into the anterior chamber to remove the viscoelastic sticking onto the cornea. Thank you.